Good evening, sir. It's always a pleasure speaking to people uh, in India, particularly Hyderabad. I graduated from JNTU Hyderabad. Then uh, the trajectory took me to uh, IIT Bombay, then Texas A&M. From there, I came to St. Louis University, and I've been a faculty here for more than 25 years. Okay, so long time. Not too long ago, about 25 years ago, Aaron was on the other side of the world uh, where you are sitting. So that's the thing. Um, so the new uh, buzzword you hear a lot of times in India is innovation, entrepreneurship, uh, particularly entrepreneurship. Uh, entrepreneurship seemed to be the new thing, but it has been there for a long time in India. All you need to do is look around and see the products and say, how did they come? And you, each product has a story to tell. What I want you to kind of uh, sit with me, we can do a little bit of storytelling about a few innovations that happened uh, long before your time. Some of them you see now, some are not there, but let's look through the innovations, okay? So if you want to be innovative, first and foremost, you kind of want to uh, think about what are the characteristics, what are the things that you must have. One big, most important thing people talk about is vision, seeing things that are going to happen next. Okay. For example, in engineering, people talk about IoT. IoT is what is happening now. Okay. So uh, in the uh, entrepreneurship, innovators, they always talk about what is going to happen next, not now. The difference between now and next is now is everybody, it's already too late to enter because the moment you start a uh, idea, develop it, make a product, it is two to five years time. Okay. By then, somebody else would have had. So don't talk about now, talk about what is next. That's what the vision is. And the second is passion. You should be really, really passionate about uh, the idea. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to uh, make it happen. Okay. Action-oriented. There are people who have very good ideas, but they don't actually realize it. They keep uh, thinking in mind. Ideas in your mind have no value. The value happens only when you can make it a reality. So you have to think about how can I take it to real world market? And they create a significant impact on people, the way people live, uh, the country and people around them. Those are three, four. Uh, another set of four you can think about that is they are very creative. They think about ideas uh, that are uncommon. They are flexible. That means uh, depending on the circumstances, they change their thing. Tenacity, tenacity, they work like a donkey. Okay. And they are good at handling risk. Okay. So in this thing, I can tell a story for each one of these one, but let's start with, just tell one of them. That is the donkey story. Some of you may have heard this story, may not. So the fable goes like this. You all know what a dobiwala is. So I don't need to explain who a dobiwala is. So a dobiwala in the village, uh, basically uh, taking care of villagers' uh, clothes in the olden days, and the donkey was his companion. As time passes, the donkey becomes old and it can't carry anymore, but it still leads. So the value proposition for the donkey changes. So Dobiwala wants to uh, sees it as a burden. Donkey eats all day, but does not do work. So he wants to get rid of the donkey. He tries to sell the donkey. Nobody wants to buy. Ah, then what does donkey want? One day he goes to market, coming back. He sees a well outside the village. And the well is dry. Okay, And there's nothing happening there. No water. So he decides that hey, this is the best way to get rid of the donkey. So in the night, he walks um, uh, 
the donkey along. Somebody is writing on my screen. Can you please not do that? Thank you. I think it's Rakesh. So he walks the donkey and pushes the donkey in the well and goes home, sleeps. Next day morning, he gets up and says, no more feeding the donkey. But unfortunately or fortunately, the donkey... Let me do one thing. I'm going to share again the reason being... The donkey survives the fall and gets up in the morning, so it finds itself around, surrounded by wet, moist thing, feels hungry, so it starts making all kinds of noises. The villagers come and see the donkey and says, hey, there's donkey, calls the Dubiwala. The Dubiwala the comes, looks at it and says, I have fed him. He worked for you. He worked for me. So you guys take care of him. And finally, they decide on foot. In about a few hours, the donkey walks out of the well. The most important thing I want to realize, uh, you realize is people who throw stones are not your enemies. They may be lifesavers. Same way when you are an entrepreneur, a lot of people would say that the idea doesn't work. He's crazy. It doesn't happen. So the people who are saying all these things are not are throwing stones at you. But if you are smart, if you are an entrepreneur, you take them and make it um, a stepping stone to where you need to go. Okay. So with this, let's kind of look at few people, uh, entrepreneurs, innovators, and talk about how they relate to these things. Okay. The first person uh, we should we should always talk about is Jamshedji Tata. Probably all of you know him. You see Tata Industries, Tata is everywhere. Okay. So the key to his is dream so big that it can't be achieved in one's lifetime. So um, he talks about thinking about what does India need? India needs power, India needs iron and steel, India needs education. He started a power industry that became Tata Power, Tata uh, iron and steel, uh, same way um, Indian Institute of uh, Sciences was started by him. Okay. So what he exemplifies is the vision. So he is able to see what the country needs. And he created an industry that lasted till now, plus the second thing, if you think about uh, Tata's, Tata is, is not listed as one of the big companies. The reason is when he started, two thirds of Tata's are held by Tata charities. Okay, so Tata's don't actually own most of it. He wanted to make sure that it's a charitable thing. So now you see uh, Jaguar, Land Rover, Tetley. Tetley is the tea I'm drinking right now. Uh, Titan, all of them are essentially products Tanish from Tata's. Okay. People talk about entrepreneurs, they don't think about Raja Ravi Verma. I really want you to think Raja Ravi Verma multiple reasons. Okay. Hindus in here may realize uh, that when you pray to the God, pretty much you are paying, praying to one of his paintings. Okay. Lakshmi painting was the most famous of all. Okay. So you may think, how is Raja Ravi Verma related to entrepreneurship? There are many painters before Raja Ravi Verma, but we don't know anybody's name. Okay, We only know Raja Ravi Verma. The reason why we know Raja Ravi Verma is because he had a, he's passionate about painting. Okay, He has a big passion. He wanted to make sure that he Paintings are there in everybody's home. Okay, he had a vision where he said, I want to make these paintings available not for kings and uh, uh, royal people, but common men. So he created a printing press. In, that was the first printing press. He actually employed Germans to print it. So he didn't outsource it. He created a printing press. So he's extremely... Uh, passionate about painting. 
he has a vision that it is going to change he was action oriented he didn't just talk he created a printing press he employed people okay and as a result the gods became accessible to everybody oppressed in the olden days uh, untouchables were not allowed to enter the temples so a uh, lot of people had no access to god access to the god was limited by the priests okay so he changed the dynamics and he said you don't go to the god god comes to your home okay so he made a social impact that allows us to pray for gods at home rather than going to temple um, letting priest permit us in or not at the end of his life he realizes that the next big thing the next big thing is movies so he actually funds um, dada palke who is the father of indian cinema and creates the movie industry literally so that's essentially his story if you think about it he is passionate he has a vision vision for what's going to happen next he wanted to uh, create an impact he created a social cultural chain where you are praying at home oppressed has the ability to paint and he's action oriented in the olden days there were no emails so postal mail service is the big thing uh, british government had to uh, build a post office next to your, his home because there were so many letters coming so they stopped delivering his home he just goes to the post office and sees the letters and replies to whatever letter he wants and then comes out so lakhs of letters used to come each day thanking him for his paintings and ability so if you have to think about one person as an entrepreneur that would be raja ravi varma so you think about uh, raja ravi varma you think entrepreneurship is all this uh, rich classy thing anybody can be entrepreneur or innovator okay uh, i'll let this video play ലോകം മുന്നിലിട്ട് ഞാൻ ഒന്ന് കാണാറുണ്ട് തേങ്ങ എന്റെ തലയിൽ വിടപ്പോഴല്ലേ എനിക്ക് ആശയം കൊടുത്തത് സാമ്പത്തിക ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടുകൾ കൊണ്ട് എനിക്ക് പഠിക്കാൻ സാധിച്ചു എങ്കിലും ഞാൻ വിജയത്തിന്റെ ചവിട്ടുപടികൾ കയറി there are few things i want you to take away from this particular video okay first and foremost what was the need for this particular device what happened is uh, most of indian coconut production comes from kerala people were getting more and more educated and finding people to climb up the tree and harvest coconut was becoming a problem so that's a backdrop where uh, coconuts were basically getting rotten in the trees and nobody to harvest and falling down and things like that so at that time he realized that there should be a better way to harvest coconuts and he created it okay think about it he doesn't have education you have education okay uh, he doesn't have money probably you have money because your somebody is paying for your tuition okay so entrepreneurs most of the time work in very tight constraints and the most important skill you need to have is common sense education not a big deal you can learn lot of things okay the thing that is most important is common sense and common sense in this world is fairly uncommon that's the biggest problem okay so what he exhibited is he was extremely creative and he had to work really hard tenacity to make this happen ha 
this is one of those really nice uh, designs, engineering designs. And um, in the chat, you can text, have you seen it, used it? Yes, no, maybe. It used to be the only uh, coconut oil when I was growing up. Have you guys seen this, used it? Yes, no, maybe. Yes, sir. Yes, good. So it's an interesting story. In the olden days, coconut oil used to come in um, tin containers. Okay. The problem with a tin container is it used to look really bad. Probably some of you can visualize a tin container, oil container. It looks bad. Okay. Putting a hole is difficult. Getting the right quantity of oil is difficult. Uh, in the winter time, now it's summer, I know, hot, but in the winter time, it used to freeze. So people used to heat a little bit, put oil, put it in this. So there are a lot of problems associated with coconut oil. And there was no branding. Nobody said uh, this particular brand of coconut oil. The coconut oil used to come in a big tin. Okay. And all that was changed by Mariwala. Okay. He founded the industry called Mariko. What he did is, he wanted uh, coconut oil in a plastic bottle. The advantage with a plastic bottle is you can squeeze it. When you squeeze, the right amount of oil comes out. You may wonder the name parachute. Parachute, at the time, parachute troopers were kind of popular in India. So he used the word parachute and uh, blue color. So it's very distinctive on the shelf. So he created this uh, thing. You can tell that being extremely creative, nice plastic bottle, branded it nicely, and he wanted to sell. The storekeeper said, we do not want to sell coconut oil in a plastic container. So he wanted to know why. They said, the problem is when you put the coconut oil on the shelf, rats come and eat the uh, plastic, because rats love coconut oil. So the oil starts leaking and makes a mess. Okay. So he has a vision to create a branded uh, company. He has a vision solving the people, make it coconut oil easy to use and everything. And, uh, but the problem was rats. Okay. The rats are not allowing him. So he thought about and uh, he actually had a design firm work with him and he created this bottle. The way it solves the problem. Any ideas how it solved the problem of rats eating the plastic, making holes? What do you think they, he did with the bottle? Want to make a guess? Okay, did somebody put a chat? Installing the cap. Uh, okay. So the way he basically solved this problem was anything to eat, the rats need a sharp edge. From there, he starts eating, or the rats start eating. So if there's a sharp edge at the bottom corner or anywhere, it will start eating. So he rounded all the edges. So rats do not have a place to start eating. Okay. So that's why the bottle you see is rounded all around. Okay. He also changed the plastic to a little harder plastic, and that is being very creative. Then he put a bottle of uh, Coconut, parachute coconut oil uh, in a cage with rats and he used to give it to the shopkeepers and they keep it for four days. And in four days, the rats, even if they are not fed, they can't make a hole in the parachute oil. So the shopkeepers got convinced and they started using it. Okay, And the coconut oil itself is uh, primarily used in Southeast Asia, India, and things like that. Now they he expanded it to uh, Saudi and other places where the oil the smell has been reduced. Okay. So let's think about Devi Shetty. Okay. So 
Narayana hospitals, uh, Narayana Hudalai is like uh, fairly famous. Some of you may know. And he's a fairly very creative in his approach. He wanted to see how can we make uh, heart um, operations affordable to Indians. So he copied the Henry Ford assembly line model. So remember that. Probably in India, one of the biggest problem is copying, okay? There's a difference between copying and stealing. And great artists don't copy, they steal. So nobody knows where he stole from. So same way he stole the idea from Henry Ford. It was used for assembly line. Same way here, uh, a nurse starts the preparation, junior doctor does the opening, senior doctor. So the specialized doctor comes and does a little bit of work. So if you look at that one, in US, the specialized doctor stays for the entire operation from start to finish. Here, only a few minutes. As a result, the doctor does more operations per day, per year, and also um, charges less per patient. So if you think about mortality rate, how many people died after the operation? So Narayana Hrudala is at 1.4, whereas in US, 1.9, okay? The price is like $2,000 in India, here anywhere from 20 to 100,000. So uh, the biggest clinic in US where most people go is they search, do about 1,300 bypass operations, whereas NH does 3,000 operations. So in every respect, NH does a better job than US because the guy has been extremely creative in the way he created the business structure. A lot of times we think about uh, creativity is coming up with new things, okay? New things is part of the job, but not the whole thing, okay? So if you will look at uh, Chick um, shampoos, you see everywhere, okay? He didn't create new shampoo or anything. All he did is created this scheme where he made it these small sachets that is affordable by everyone. So you do not need to buy a whole big shampoo bottle. You can buy a sachet. So he says what the rich man can enjoy, the common man should be able to afford. That's what made him extremely creative. Again, we are talking about this part of it. Okay, let's prestige cookers. Cookers are really impressive things. Okay, so um, what does a cooker do? So entrepreneurs, a lot of times innovators, they think about what is the need satisfied, and prestige cookers were one of those things that they thought about. What is the need satisfied by a cooker for Indians? What do you think the need that a cooker satisfies in India? What is the purpose of a cooker? So anyone can answer to this. Cook something what you... Sorry? To cook something which we want to. Okay, to cook something we want to. But you can cook without a cooker too. Means it's an idea to save the time, sir. Okay. In normal, in general, if we try to cook, it takes usually fifteen minutes. Or uh, in rice cooker, it will be getting of ten minutes. Time saving. Time saving. So in the morning, you are going to school. Uh, your dad is going to work. Mom may be working too. So she needs to get the thing done. So. It's time is of essence. So you want to cook faster. So uh, the pressure cooker does the job of cooking faster. It also has added benefit because it cook faster. The amount of uh, energy required to cook is less. That's a big advantage. Uh, it keeps the nutrients uh, in the food. 
that's another advantage. So there are multiple advantage because of the high temperature, it kills the bacteria too. So Prestige is the one who made it widely popular in India. In the olden days, they used to go and uh, in helicopters, fly, put the uh, flyers out there saying that this is cooker. They used to send uh, teams to teach your grandma, grandfathers, and everybody that this is a good thing for you to use. So they popularized cookers a lot. Okay. Uh, they also created uh, the most, uh, the best marketing scheme because of. Uh, Safety concerns, explosion possibility. The, they have many redundant uh, safety features. Okay, so people buy a cooker; it lasts a lifetime. Why would the person buy another cooker? So they created the cooker exchange scheme. Scheme. Okay, the exchange scheme is one of the best marketing strategies ever adopted in the world. Okay, so that's. Uh, the second thing uh, they did. Okay. But during the emergency period, there was few things happening. One is uh, supply to uh, for aluminum and steel was becoming more and more difficult. Government used to allocate certain amount of iron and steel. That's one thing that was happening. The second thing that was happening is a lot of these cookers were exploding, particularly in North India, but all over India too. That is because of this small piece here. Okay. This small piece is made out of what is called tin bismuth. It's a very soft metal and that sits here. Most of you know where it sits. Okay. If the pressure is too high, it is supposed to uh, push this piece out and release the pressure. So this is. Uh, yeah. In cars, we are talk about primary restraint, secondary restraint. Primary restraint is seat belts. In case of accident, it prevents you from falling. Secondary restraint is airbag. Here, primary is uh, the valve here. Secondary is this valve here. So the weight goes off first. If some reason weight gets stuck, this would be the secondary one. So, but the problem is, uh, if the primary doesn't work, secondary is also not working because cheap uh, substitutes, people in uh, North India started making duplicates. They didn't use tin bismuth. They, it looks like aluminum. So they started using aluminum. Aluminum is stronger, so it doesn't um, leak out. And so as a result, it was exploding the cooker. And cookers were getting a bad rap. So... TTK um, was in the verge of collapse. At that time, the guy here is TT Jagannath. He is the grandson. He was doing his PhD, not grandson, son. He was doing PhD in Cornell in mechanical engineering. He actually graduated from IIT Chennai, uh, gold medalist mechanical engineering. He was uh, thinking of completing his PhD, becoming a professor, and that's his trajectory. So parents call and say, hey, we have a problem. Um, our company is almost close to bankruptcy. Can you come and help? So T.T. Jagannath comes back to India. And uh, one of the things he always says, he's very passionate about cooking. Okay, And he even tells um, whether his kids will take or not, depends on whether they're passionate about cooking or not. Okay, So he comes back, goes to North India, and... Uh, he needs to solve this problem okay, for the company to survive. What do you think the solution is? You would probably see at home. How did he solve this problem? Branding. Okay. So the branding would uh, still duplicates are difficult to control. This is something outside. Branding could be a possibility, but he didn't use that. So what he created is the hole right here. 
can you guys see my cursor? On the left side, above the handle, there's a hole. That gasket release system. So he created this hole. So when the pressure is high, the uh, steam would leak from the gasket out through this hole. Okay. So he changed this uh, valve to this. So instead of the valve being the secondary uh, release system, the hole on the side became the secondary release system. So he says uh, the hole that saved the TTK ship. So that's what his innovation was. Okay. So do it without me. Let's go. Recording in progress. One circle, 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 Mother, shoot, mother, shoot, mother, shoot, mother, shoot, mother, shoot, mother, shoot. Oh, you're so, Jata, ma'am?